how amazing was Dre? I, I love his energy, I love what he stood for, and I'm really glad that I was able to get him in the hot seat to interview him personally, no one else, and really get down to the story. I think that he's got a lot to tell, he's got a lot to offer Las Vegas. All right, so on to our next guest. As I told you, we got a guy that can do it all. He's a Harvard grad, he's Marquis Who's Who, he's in magazines, Wall Street Journal, Fortune 500, he's got his own radio show, he's got a production company. I mean, what can't this guy do? Like, I'm my mind is blown, where do we even begin, right? All right, so everyone, welcome Tom Hillary. Hi, I, I welcome. I wanna meet the guy you're talking about. <laughs> I know, well, you know good. what, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Today is our first episode of The Hot Seat, and you are, my sir, going to sit on this hot seat, and you are worthy. With all of those things that, that you can do and have done, you are worthy, sir. Well, thank so, you so much. Thank you for helping me raise the standard to the show, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a pleasure meeting you. Like, this is the first time we met, you know, we never met before, and so I, I looked into a little bit, was able to just gather as much info as I could, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, it's so knowledgeable. Like, where do I begin? Okay, so first let's start. You know, you're a very well educated man, and I love that. Um, from the East Coast, are you from Boston? Or, yes. yes? I'm, it's five generations in Massachusetts. Period. And you love someone who knows where you're from, right? And you're proud. So now you made on all of these things. What was your start like? You know, what was your main goal? What, was, what were you working towards? Well, I always had this desire to tell stories. And when I was a real little child, I wanted to make comic books. And as time goes on, I get a little bit older, I want to make movies. And it's uh, it's really tough to do that in New England, first and foremost because of the weather. You know, you can't count oh, on sunshine yeah. out there, yeah, so you I'm deal with that so. issue. <laughs> you understand yeah, what I'm talking no, I get about. It. Okay? Yeah. But um, California is a great place, it's the movie capital of the world, but it's also it's a little more crowded than I felt like living with right now. Mm -hmm. And when I found out I could drive from Las Vegas to Los Angeles in six hours, including stopping for lunch, I said, you know what? I'm going to do Las Vegas. And yeah. here I am. And how long have you been here? Moved here about 15 years ago. Yeah, so you've probably seen a lot of different things change, how the city change, how it's evolving, the different types of people that come and go, right? And I'm sure it's really inspiring to you as like a, a writer on, and to create movies, right? Because that's how you moved out here. Now, in the beginning, when you're studying, you know, you, you made it on this amazing list. Like, tell us about this, because I'm like, how do you get in the Wall Street Journal? How do you get a Fortune 500? <laughs> and you just keep doing it year yeah. after year after year. Well, I have to admit, it all started out with the uh, Marquee Who's Who listings. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're the ones who have. You know, Marquee is the Who's Who that's been around since 1898. So, you know, I'm, I'm not saying this to boast, but when you're looking for the Who's Who books, that's what I'm saying. it's the Marquee yeah. books. It's not the other company with call, that calls mm -hmm. itself Who's Who and uh, the other biographical yeah. reference work. So, yeah. go for Marquee. Yeah. That's the point, and uh, got in introduced to them. Gosh, I can't remember now. It was back in the '90s, and at that point, uh, I actually had a brief career in politics. At that time, I was mm -hmm. elected to the board of assessors in the town of Sudbury, Massachusetts. So I was sending everybody there to property tax bills. Some were offended by it. Some thought it was a badge of honor. Look what I can afford. How much my <laughs> place is worth? Ah. <laughs> So you were that guy. It was you a good time guy. there. That, yeah, but that, was, uh, that wasn't really where my heart lay. My heart lay in the, uh, the creative arts, and that's what yeah. I wanted to do. Yeah, that's why I really want to get down to like the beginning of you. Like, you know, you're here now with movies. You might have always had that dream, but that's not always where you found you know, the beginning of your success. Like, you made it on Marquise Who's Who for this. I know you do patents, right? Oh, yeah. Is that kind that of like your, your business? That's kind of how you made it on there? Well, no, actually, I came fairly late. What happened was I was doing all these screenplays, and it, you know, you can write screenplays a lot faster than you can put them into production. So during the downtime, of course, the creative juices keep flowing. Oh. And the first thing I thought was, you know, cell phones, they feel like kind of uncomfortable in your pocket because they're rigid, yeah. but they, they, they can just bend just a little bit. Yeah. So they felt right in your back pocket. That would be a really good thing. So fortunately, a friend of mine, uh, Fred, we go back to first grade together. And uh, he had like 25 U.S. patents issued to him. And it just so happens that he moved out to Arcadia, California many years ago. So while I was trying to get going in Hollywood while I was still living in Massachusetts, I was able to stay at Fred's place. Mm -hmm. that's, how, that's how it goes, <laughs> you know what I mean? And during the downtime, he said, you know, Tom, that, that, that flexible cell phone thing you talk about, that, that's, that's a good idea. Why don't you patent that? And I'm going, sure, no problem. You want me to build a car in my backyard, too? He said, come down here, I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> So that's how that got started. 
And that sort of snowballed, and I got a few other but, patents after that. Yeah, but that's amazing because it kind of brings back to you thinking, oh my God, like my creative juices, this is launching me, mm -hmm. right? And you're doing all these things, and one thing leads to another, you didn't think it would go, but then it all comes back mm -hmm. to you being a writer. Now, is that your main thing when it comes to the arts? Is writing, or have oh, yes. you, is that that's your main passion? Yeah, you see, originally I thought I was going to have these brilliant screenplays, and I was just going to get on a plane and <laughs> Stop in Los Angeles and meet a producer and say, hi, look at the greatest best. screenplays you've ever seen, right? So, wow, here's a six-figure check for an option. Didn't quite work that way. Right. Surprise. Right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so long, long, tedious process. But uh, finally, finally, we got the um, the movie into production. As a matter of fact, uh, tremendous coincidence, the first script I did is still the one with the biggest star, Eric Roberts. He's a Golden Globe nominee in Project Solitude, Buried Alive. Yeah, and my local distributor just got that placed on 2B TV. I found that's out amazing. yesterday. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Well, congratulations. Yeah. It's a big announcement. It's yeah. a perfect time for you to be on the show. Project Solitude, starring Eric Roberts yeah. on 2B TV. So all of your screenplays, like, they're part of your production company. That you clean, you know, you match, but you, you own it. Did you start this in hopes of you writing it and kind of controlling the way that um, you do Hollywood, basically? Yeah, right? well, you, you always, you, you have to start somewhere, and you usually start with you've got the remote control in your hand, and you open that TV set, and you go, and you keep doing like that until your right thumb becomes very strong, mm -hmm. so you're not finding what you want to see. So when you get that big right thumb <laughs> from your clicker, you know you've got to start creating things. So that's where I started writing scripts. Oh, that's amazing. And what, where do you get your in inspiration from? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's just sort of... It's just in comes you. To me. It just comes to you. You are an artiste. Pretty I get much. that vibe. Yeah. You know, and I, and I love that because you just write because you love it. Not because you're looking at it and being like, I'm going to do this for, in hopes to only get fame, fortune. You know, there's a lot of people that do it for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And very rarely do you meet people that stick to their motive in the beginning, which is they love it or they want to make a difference. Right, and I, and I definitely see that you, and I love that, because you moved all the way across the country with just your scripts and being like, hi, yeah. <laughs> notice me, <laughs> which I love, that. that's what everyone's dream, right, and the difference with you is you made it happen. There's a lot of people who do that, and they get so beaten down by the industry and by the circumstances, right, how hard it is, the money, the time, who, what, where, when, who am I, right, like, so, and, and I love that. So what has your journey been like since that first time you went out to Hollywood with your script for, till now? Um, okay, well, I had a little bit of an unusual background for this because actually my uh, bachelor's degree was in economics. And I worked in a trust department at the bank for a while. So before I tried to like make creative things happen, I actually learned something about this is a checkbook. Mm -hmm. When it goes to zero, that's bad. <laughs> This is a credit card. <laughs> when it says minimum payment, don't do that. <laughs> it will get out of hand. So I had that stuff figured out first. So I could figure, okay, this is what it's going to cost to move out there. This is what the cost of living yeah. is like out there. Um, the, the people in the creative arts really, 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 I, I say, Ollie, please, 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 take a look at your credit card statement. Take a look at your checkbook. Okay, because you know, the, the, the world, no matter how good you are, they're not all just waiting to give you a six-figure check to do right. your first move. Right. So you've got to know how you're going to pay the bills before you can actually start, we hope, making money creatively. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I always tell people on this is, you know, because there's been a lot of disappointment in Hollywood, as you can imagine, the Boulevard of Broken Dreams, that's not original with me. <laughs> you've got to figure out what makes you feel personally successful. You could be a successful actor in a barn in Vermont, Mm -hmm. If what you want to do is local theater for your local community That's what makes in Vermont. You happy, right? Yeah. yeah. So understand you know, what what is going to make you feel like it was right because and I did something good and I'm happy with my life because if you have a certain goal that you're not going to reach, then you're going to end up unhappy. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see everybody be happy. Not right. everybody's going to get rich by any stretch of the imagination, but everybody can be satisfied. So what is your happy? What is your success? Oh, just seeing the characters come to life on the screen. Yeah, so you're living that now, yeah. right? Watching and, Professor and Chong Sola on the screen last night on 2 TV, watching uh, Innocenka Donofa, the beautiful girl. <laughs> Her name means innocence. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> you know, I'm an actress myself, and I love to read your scripts. I feel like with your personality, I'd love to see what what you come up with, because you have no genre, right? I feel like, or do you oh, have thriller. a genre? You yeah, have typically. Thriller, thriller. okay, yeah. so we're getting, to, so that's what kind of you go towards. So you inspired by your own brain, but you stick to thriller. But I, I would love to see, like, what kind of thriller it is, because, you know, there's thrillers that make you think, there's thrillers that, like, oh, my God, it's all jump scare, mm -hmm. right? And there's thrillers that are more, like, 
psychological. Yeah, right. I, well, they tend to be on the psychological side. Mm -hmm. I, I try. I try to do the, the quick tagline: multifaceted characters and complex relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not going to say it always works out that way, but that's that's what I strive for each time. Of it. Yes. You know, and I, what I love is, you know, as an actress, and I'm pretty sure this goes for you as well, is like if you can make the audience maybe feel something at the end of mm -hmm. their their movie, the TV show, the episode, or whatever, I feel like you've done your job, right? Because yeah. no one wants to sit there and think, of, oh my God, that, that it's so strange, right? No <laughs> one wants to sit there thinking about the writing. No one wants to sit about, yeah. you know, they want it to be sober. You're in it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't even care that this is fiction. Right, that these are actors on screen that you just saw a different movie yesterday. Like you're in it and you leave feeling either emotion, sad, epiphany, just something, just something, even if a little tear in your eye. You know, even if it's so bad that it's here, you need to feel something. Yeah. Right, right, and that's absolutely amazing. And so now that you've done so many different things in your life, do you think that they all kind of encompass each other? I know you talked about the business side of it, but you know, you also talked about you know a little politics here and there. You talked about your patents. Do you use all of these things to kind of encompass and put it in your art today? Well, what you have to, you know, start start with a firm foundation, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is what we need to stay alive first. Mm -hmm. okay, right. get, get those basic life right. skills down first. Unfortunately, you do have to learn. You need an electrician before you need a musician. Sorry, that's just the fact. Yeah. Okay, so get, get that done first and then figure out, you know, what's, what's going to give you the personal sense of fulfillment I was mm -hmm. just talking about. And so I really like entertaining people and trying to get stories out there that I hope they haven't quite seen these exact things before. And now, 5,000 years worth of literature, it's a little tough to come up with something nobody's ever even conceived of remotely right. before. But we can do it okay. Top style. <laughs> yes. Style. That's what you got to go, hey, this is yeah. my style. You can't beat me. Yeah. <laughs> you get the same story, it's my style. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, sell, selling is what I really hate having to deal with. Mm -hmm. That's why I like, I need marketing people to help me out. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing, especially with social media now, it's become the biggest thing. I mean, it, it works, it's just, it's overwhelming, and mm -hmm. it's just a game you gotta play before you make to the point where you're just like, oh, you know who I am. Yeah. You really do, I gotta post every, every two hours. But um, I wanna touch base that like, you also do something like we're doing now, we have a radio show. Right, Las Vegas rocks. Well, well I, 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 yeah, I don't have a radio show. I'm, I'm the executive producer of it, but the man really behind is the man Ron Garrett. Uh, he's the creator of the show and the host of the show. He does all the heavy lifting, books all the guests, mm -hmm. comes up in uh, formats the whole show. Right. He was uh, ent uh, entertainment director of the Sahara. Once oh, that's time. amazing! Yeah, yeah. So, uh, quite an accomplishment. Great, great person to have on your side. Yeah. Yeah. But you're in front of the camera, so do you involve yourself apart from being executive producer? Are you on there? Do you uh, talk and meet with people? Yeah, I'm actually the word from Hollywood. Usually, you get me the last couple of minutes of the show, mm -hmm. and I tell them, this is what's going on in Hollywood. And the purpose of it is not just for news, but to tell local Las Vegas entertainers how to take this information and use it for themselves for their own careers over here. Yeah. So what's the biggest, probably the most important thing that you've told your viewers or listeners so far about the biggest thing to take from Hollywood to here? Um, from a, uh, don't just say what you want to say. Stay focused on your audience. Because the award shows are having a terrible time mm -hmm. uh, lately. And, and the Golden Globes, I was especially surprised about because, in my opinion, they did everything right. Uh, they, they dealt with their complaints about lack of diversity. Okay, well, they addressed that. They have 103 like non Golden Globe people you know, chiming in on who should be getting the award. As far as I know, the speeches are all about art and fashion, and still the, uh, the audience was down. So. Yeah. That's bad. News. I think that's the biggest thing, and, and I see it, and it's not to be controversial or anything, but it's, it's a thing now where we're no longer focusing on the art. You know, I mean, for me being, you know, a woman of color, mm -hmm. you know, there's some times where I feel kind of discouraged only because, like, I would never get mad if I wouldn't win. If I even get a, a job that would get nominated, a role that would be put up for something that's serious, that's already an honor with itself. Mm -hmm. Right? And so even if I'm like, hey, but you know what, that person's performance, they deserve it. You know, I wouldn't do that, but like, I, it's more about being very humble and being very, um, you know, just honored to have even the opportunity to go mm -hmm. and to be a seated guest. Because you know, I've been to these award shows, I've been invited, but I'm never going to be nominated, right? When I'm programming <laughs> yeah. things like that. But like, I imagine being in there and still being upset. You know, having everything, having that role that you work so hard, and still being upset, and then you know, it's kind of twitching the audience's view on I should have wanted, I didn't because ABC, instead of mm -hmm. just being. Right? Do you, do you kind of see that as well as what's going on in Hollywood? What, or, or Orson Welles mm -hmm. never won the Academy Award. Alfred Hitchcock never got the Academy Award for Best Director. He got a Lifetime Achievement thing at the end. Uh, Edward G. Robinson, I think, never got the Academy Award. It just, it's, you hope you get it, and if you don't, so what? That's, mm -hmm. how, you, that's how you have to approach it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
or are you going to be disappointed again? And we don't. We, I don't want people to be disappointed. It's a very and remember, it's part of it. There are just so many people looking for so few jobs. Right. You know, right. Because I have that. It's like. <laughs> this is amazing, you know what I mean? Like, hey, at the end of the day, and that was me. I have it. I'm sitting here with all these amazing people, and that kind of is like a dream within itself. And so now I touched a little bit about, you know, you're bringing Hollywood kind of that knowledge, putting in Vegas sense. But the biggest thing now in, in show business mm -hmm. is that Vegas is like now it's like Hollywood, right? Sure. How do you feel about that? Do you feel that this is going to be a great breaking point? For the actors, the artists, show business here. I'll, I'll tell you how long overdue this is. I'm pretty sure Max Sennett himself. You know who Max Sennett was? No. Charlie Chaplin. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. The guy who discovered Charlie okay. Chaplin okay. back around 1926, I believe, said that there should be a movie industry here in Nevada. Uh, Clara Bow? No? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mar Marilyn Monroe, before her Betty Grable, before her Jean Harlow, before her Clara Bow in the 1920s. She was married to the Lieutenant Governor of Nevada. A ranch was here in Nevada. Okay, this is Marilyn Monroe of the 1920s. We right. know the movie industry right. here. Something hasn't been put into place here. It should have been literally 100 years ago. Yeah. At this point, the advantages we have over here, and here's the big one everybody forgets, is the sunshine. Uh -huh. The reason LA got going is because you could count on sunny days. Yeah. California, nah, maybe not a business friendly state. Nevada is a very business friendly state. Things should be all together. The um, I call it the UNLV Film School. I believe it's actually mm -hmm. called the Greenspun Campus. is a bigger facility than UCLA. Oh, so they got really? yeah. So they got technical yeah. education is available over here. Mm -hmm. So all the elements should be right. merging, right. and it hasn't quite happened now. Uh, Mark Wahlberg moving out right. there might yeah. be just what we need to put it over there. Right. Boston boy, by the way. Exactly. I know. I think mean, everyone's like holding their breath. They're very excited. Yeah. I know he's, he's filming here uh -huh. next month. So, I mean. Well, he moved here. Yeah. And so, but then his first time I know, because I may or may not be in the movie. But anyway, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But that, that's a big stepping point. I think we're all just like, finally. You yeah. know, but I feel like, you know, what I want to talk about is that you and I just so happen to, you know, we came at different times. We've been here a long, like, only been here maybe three, almost four years. You've been here 15. Mm -hmm. But. We're here now, and we're still here seeing this happen. Because if this happened maybe 100 years ago, it would kind of be like another LA. Like we would be one of like how many millions of people that would be out for the movie business. But if it's coming now, it's kind of like we have that chance to kind of bring Vegas and be those people that really started and then kind of just showcase that Vegas has it. And there's talent here. Yeah. And obviously, there's brilliance, there's creativeness, and there's amazing people out here. Right. Well, you want to diversify the economy mm -hmm. too. I mean, we're all, we 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 are the live entertainment capital of the world. Usually, they don't put that adjective in front of it, but there's yes. no reason we shouldn't be a major player right. in, as a film entertainment capital. Yeah, but people always, you know, they look at live entertainment and they're just like, oh, they're not gonna buy it. You know what I mean? They have this stigma, mm -hmm. and it's hard to break that stigma because Vegas is like people come here, you, you know, the Vegas thing, showgirls, all these things, but they don't think of it as like. Okay, <laughs> we are made for the cameras too. Blue. You know what I mean? Like, give me a script. So let's go. Like, it's not all about LA all the time. And so I'm loving that. And I love that we're getting the opportunity to prove. So, is there anything that you're currently working on now, as far as a movie in production that is your own, or something that you're really excited about that you want to tell our audience? Okay. Well, in in production, um, what we're uh, setting up now is a student bodies. Let's say a horror thriller set on a college campus. Oh, so that will be the next one that actually goes cool. into production with the Jagged okay. Edge and ITN distribution. Yeah. Um, as far you know, we're just mo moving along with the Las Vegas Rocks radio show, just yeah. bringing in the live acts and making sure they have exposure so that mm -hmm. we can get people to the live right, venues. Right. Um, oh, I'm trying to find uh, licensing deals for the various patents. Okay. So, so we're going to see. You're just a man of all trades. Jack, so he literally came on here saying, I want to meet that person. He is that person. It's amazing. He's got a quirky personality. He's, you, you know, you're different. And you're definitely the type of people, like, like what you said in Las Vegas Rocks, you know, you want to get these people out there, showcase what Vegas has and who these people truly are and what they have to offer. And I think everyone overlooks everyone. Like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's another person telling him he wants to be a writer or an actor, whatever. But no, there's more to it. The passion behind it, the work ethic, and what you have going on. And I want to make sure we market those things. And, you know, anyone have opportunities? Investors, actors, opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right business now. partners, you know. It, it's just such an amazing thing. And so uh, congratulations on all of your success. You have a lot out to be streaming everywhere, here, there, everywhere. Um, and so. Oh, 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 if I may, the easiest way to find the movies would be to go to my website, uh, starlight.productions. Not .com, not .org, starlight.productions. .com. See, I don't do that .com. 
films. Yeah. Like, yeah. it is all about production. <laughs> and the, the reason for that is the, one of the movies is called Honey Trap, and Honey Trap can lead you in the wrong places, but you got the right link. That's amazing. The, the and the before page. we go and ask you one complicated, like, you know, hard question. Okay. Hard question. What is the biggest? Do I get to chew them? <laughs> <laughs> misconception about you. Mm, <laughs> I'm almost afraid to ask people what they think of me in the first place. Um, if I sort of look like this when you're talking, it's not because I'm not interested, it's because I'm like on a script somewhere, I'm on a patent somewhere, so please don't take anything personal, people. I'm not trying I, to make I anybody feel that. bad. I want you to feel good. I really do. <laughs> I love that. I love asking, I, you know, yeah. I just started really yeah. asking that question, so I think that your answer sums up your whole journey, you know, things, and it's something that people carry. You know, the starting from your journey up until now, and it shows how far you've come based on your slow answer. And I feel like you're just someone who's got so much going on, and you're just wow. you're just that guy. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I, like I would her. love. Thank you. <laughs> that's all I Welcome want. Welcome back. Sure. I yes, want to feel please. better again. Okay. Please, I want. If I have more time, I would love to get into each movie. Please schedule another interview. I'm sure the audience was here. I want to dig deep into you know your journey in filmmaking, what it's like leaving us that sense telling your story and some funny stories. I would love to talk about that solely just about the movie thing, but I want to make sure everyone knows who you are before we get into that. So then we, you know, Kevin just knows. This is the guy. He's Tom. Thanks. He's Tom Miller. Wow. All right. <laughs> but guys, like I said, Tom Hillary, he was everything like I said he was in the beginning of this interview up until the end, and I'm so honored to have met you and have you here in the hot seat. You're very kind. Thank you so much. I would love to have you back on another day. So everyone, this is Tom Hillary, and right after the break, I'm going to say my goodbyes. So thank you, Tom. See you soon. Social Media Shows is a production company based here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We offer these services. Been streaming shows live in real time for over four years on major social media platforms and also on our website socialmediashows.com and we are now on Roku TV. We welcome you to have your own show on our TV network. Call us 651-955-8743 or email us at admin at socialmediashows.com. How amazing was today's show, guys? Oh my gosh, so much to cover. Two amazing and very humble people, and entre basically entrepreneurs, people that can do it all sitting in the seat. I don't think there's something we did not cover today with these two guests alone. So, I mean, to me, that was a success for the first episode of The Hot Seat with Priscilla. Now, I did put this on social media. I did say this last week. We are open for submissions. If you think you have what it takes to sit in the hot seat, you can always email admin at socialmediashows.com with your resume, your bio, and you might have a chance to be interviewed by me and sit in the hot seat and have all these amazing viewers in the city of Las Vegas see you and know what you're all about. So I, I just can't, I'm, I'm just so excited. Like Maria's standing there smiling. Like I hope you guys love the promo reel. I hope you guys love everything about this show. I'm really excited to see where we can take the show and then what your kind of comments are about it. We love to get your feedback. It has helped us tremendously with how we kind of, you know, revamp our shows, how we're structurally doing things and just kind of making it just bigger and better for all of you amazing viewers at home. So once again, my name is Priscilla Moy, and you are watching The Hot Seat with Priscilla, live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. at Social Media Shows. I will see you next week.